The stuff's been going good today. I think the big thing that we did was um, I kind of gave a tutorial to the art team on how to use the uh, tools for laying out the environments. I think that everything is set up so that it would be easy for you guys to be able to um, uh, just start iterating on these levels yourselves. The two things that are important for levels are these directories, the tile sets directories, where Raz has been storing all of the tiles that he's been making, um, and the rooms directories, which actually contain all of the representations of the individual rooms. Uh, so here's the castle in here. Um, you can see that this, this tool is kind of Photoshop-y. Like, all of the stuff that I need for the game to run um, are contained in these little, like, pinkish-purple layers. Braz has put together a new tile set um, that ha contains, like, castle wall pieces. Um, so I'm going to go browse to that directory. And so once you've got this guy, all you have to do is, like, click on one of these things and you can paint. Mm. Um, so you can see I'm painting into the background layer. These rocks are showing up over top of them because they're contained in this rocks layer right here. Mm -hmm. So just normal Photoshop-y stuff. Um, of course, trees are a little bit tricky uh, because typically you want this stuff to render over top of the character and this stuff to render in the same layer as the character. So if I wanted that to work, the way that I would do it is I'd place the base of the tree on a layer below the object's layer. And then I would place this stuff uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. on the overlay. And then... So you can see, like when I'm behind the, when I'm up above the tile uh, for the roots or for the trunk of the tree, uh, that I sort behind it, and then when I'm in front of it, I sort in front of it. So that's that's the basic way to lay stuff out. Um, it's got a couple other cool features. Uh, for example, if you shift click, um, you get this thing. <laughs> so you click once, and so like if you just want to lay out a long wall really rapidly, you can just go like that's that. Cool. The collision's pretty easy to adjust, and again, it's that same sort of thing where this thing has arbitrary geometry. And it'll actually work in the game, but uh, we should try and stay tile aligned if possible because it's going to be less confusing for the player if we do that. I'd like us to stick to square shapes. That's the only thing that the code supports right now. If you have 2HB running in the background, the tool for running the game, uh, then when you save that file, it'll automatically hot reload everything. Oh, I got the roll in, by the way. Um, that's basically it. I don't think I... I think those are all the major beats. All right. Cool. Yeah, thanks, guys. So like all these crappy environments in the game are starting to get the crossover into the stuff that'll actually look good and, and fit with the game and all that kind of stuff. So I've been really happy to see that come along. Yeah, I think this is where the rubber uh, meets the road. How, how overused is that uh, particular idiom? I haven't okay. heard it today. Okay. <laughs> well, I'll be the first for today. I'm going to eat your apple if you leave it here. It's not your apple? Oh, is it poisoned? Yeah. It's good. So I just found this oh my God. by Bank of America on the Eat corner. It. <laughs> Eat it. It's gotta be good then. That's where, that's where dogs use the bathroom. Oh, that's true. That's probably why it's so fertile over there. Everybody's taking one bite, man, before we leave the meeting. <laughs> the games just start going crazy at that point. Oh, yeah, so. Did you guys feel like Friday is a good lockdown? I'm a designer and I don't want to check stuff in until Tuesday night. And you, it's well, I know the you engineer's to. job to stop me from doing that. Okay. <laughs> so is it kind of like feature complete and alpha by Friday? Is yes. that the idea? Yes. Yeah, that sounds good. Uh, today's all music. Hopefully get intro sketched out and done. The game music done with the vibe of the ambience. We got our accordion player coming in at four. And he's doing all that stuff, so I have accordion. I don't know how we got it. Thank Brent. Um, so uh, I don't know if I'm like just like shallow, not knowing much about accordions, but the Amelie soundtrack is like something that's totally awesome to me. Jan yes. Pearson. A lot of the accordion players that are just learning accordion now are inspired by what he did. So yeah. it's everybody's kind of been doing it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. a little been, oversaturated yeah. with that sound. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. That's probably if this is going out into the world, that's probably the sound that you want. Okay, um, I'm gonna let you make the call on whatever you feel like playing today. I'm gonna give you like just little little cues. I mean, like it's just like so. Like the the first one would probably be like the lullaby to kind of think about, and that's just like a, um, something that her mother used to play to her um, a long time ago, and finds out in this forest it does something. And uh, what it does is it it puts um, creatures to sleep. The other one will actually uh, mend broken dreams, so you'll uh -huh. find parts of the dreams that have been eaten away at. These, these recordings that we're making now are just for the alpha version, or are these kind of like... This entire alpha? thing is an alpha version. Great. Okay. Yeah. And incrementally, that means if we only have two weeks to do this, you probably should only have about three seconds to do these songs. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I don't know. I think you should just start 
jamming and, and like doing little sketches and like start messing and puttering around and just ignore all of us. She's kind of like a mixture of different cultures. So um, it's almost like a time to invent a theme that just works for her and isn't like a classical exact, you know, well-known gypsy thing. sections of a dream that the fox has had and it's all spilled around him. Mm -hmm. Think of them as like a ripped quilt, quilt work of a dream and then sections that are torn apart and you while playing this accordion, being close to them, you see the holes start mending themselves and pulling fragments back together. Mm. So, sounds like whatever you're ready. I could stay here all day. <laughs> you could put me to sleep with that. Um, I mean, you have like uh, the environment interactions that you still have to develop. Like. Yeah, well, we've, Dave's already started on those today. So today and tomorrow, we should see a lot of progress in those. Mm -hmm. And Jane's done a lot of work on the interior today as well. So uh, yeah, we've had some important things come in today and we needed them to come in today. <laughs> So that's really good. So I think Andy wants a very particular mood thing. So I'm trying to go for something more like that. Kind of but, uh, foreground fog. And yeah, just that kind of feel, you know. So when you have like this many variables, it's hard to sort of like get everything to go together. You know, when you change one number, it could look super different. Like if I do this. It's <laughs> so. It's almost like too many options sometimes. You just have to. Since it's kind of like a mood game, it's pretty important to get this down. Because fog is, just changes things so much. Because there's also like how much it goes to the sky. So even before you do the lighting, I usually like to nail down the fog. So much of the color comes from the fog. It's kind of surprising. Because each thing can have different colors. You know. It's like a pretty powerful system, actually. But it also means it's very overwhelming. <laughs> so it's like, now I kind of like where this stuff is going. Mm -hmm. and the problem is, this is like too much fog for the tower. You're also trying to get a sense of you going into sort of darkness when you're going away from the path. But now I have to figure out how that's going to work. There's just a lot of tuning, though. It's one of those things where you can only design so much on paper and you just have to tune the rest of it in the, in the game and that's where the hard work is. So what we're trying to do here is, um, you know, when you're ju regular jumping, this is just, you know, when you're jumping around, but every time you come up to a ledge, um, like you can see like, it's kind of difficult to jump onto the ledge and we want to have a sense of like that you're climbing through this tower rather than just jumping platform to platform. Uh, so what 
the world builders do is on all of the like platforms that you can jump on, there's these little nodes that run along the edges that just dictate whether there's a ledge grab. And then these two little spheres here dictate if this sphere hits that ledge locator, that like little marker, then she'll go into a climb animation. So it's like, it'll just look like you're just climbing up the mountain. This one here is for a little quick climb, which we added, which is like a faster version. So if you're like just about to miss a ledge, it doesn't like drop you down into the ledge hang. It actually just like zips her up there um, to make it look like she just hops onto the ledge. Right now, when we're doing these jumps, we're just trying, Ben's gonna go through and try to figure out how to align these the character so she's not sucked up into the world. And this really seems like the most ambitious of all the projects, just considering the, the range of character motion that has to be developed. Uh, yeah, I'm seeing that now. So basically, as soon as you stop sleeping here, we have like star time now. If you stop sleeping around uh, 8, <laughs> 8 a.m., <laughs> we're probably going to need a sleep anim as well. If we yeah. didn't request well, the way that, we had set up the, the, the bed props so that we uh -huh. didn't have to do more animations for all the bodies was that mm -hmm. they're just like sleep pods that they get into. Oh, okay. So we can just hide the character entirely during their sleep. Oh, okay. So yeah. yeah, I want all my guys to, to live by the same schedule that I have and just leave it running more on that work. <laughs> <laughs> we could so I get that. home and have to deal with their mess. That's funny, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. That's cool. All right, sweet. Almost, almost a game now, right? Almost I know. Almost done. Right? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> sweet. Okay. So the way that it works is we're going to have different heads and different bodies. So and the bodies are the ones who are going to be performing most of the actual animation. The head is just like a frame. And I don't want the gameplay system to really have to care about direction. Like direction is going to be decided by these specific gameplay systems such as the navigation which, you know, figures out like what's the dominant direction and that's what I'm where I'm going to face. Or um the various things that the characters can interact with in the world. You know, let's say uh they're working on a power plant or something, they'll just like walk up to the correct tile and the power plant itself is going to tell me, okay, what direction should this guy face when he walks over here? And the character will just turn and start playing the animation. And the gameplay system that's in charge of the task will just say like, I don't care what direction you're facing, I want you to play this. And the underlying system kind of figures that all out. And has been doing great, like just blocking out all the functionality and moving ahead and building those systems. Um, but we need a world, you know, we need a, a more fleshed out world for those systems to live in. Um, and that's what we're lagging a bit on. But, um, but yeah, it's, I, think it's, I think it's proceeding. Um, on the art side, it seems like, you know, Bagel's been cranking away on characters. Say has been making some great props. Um, and then Jeremy's working on the world tiles. Um, so, so. Say's drawing. <laughs> so we're having a meeting right now. Um, <laughs> so I. <laughs> so. You know what? It's actually I haven't laid down like this in a long time. Actually, are you getting your insight? So into I'm, like, I'm just pretending to do an animation reference, but I'm actually just caught sleeping under. My uh huh. Eyes. You're just getting some. Yeah. <laughs> it, I might just fall asleep doing this pose. Um, okay, so the girl would be on the ground asleep, and then we would cut to back at the campfire, same pose. Yeah. Kind of like this, and um, <laughs> artistry. I don't know about artistry. It's kind of uh, it's kind of tedious process because I start by drawing out these like templates that sort of have all of the pieces that I think I'll need, and then I lay them out into a little fake map, and then once that was done, uh, kind of went in and started painting over it, to try to like come up with a different style of tiles that I'll need, and try to get the look right. So the floors will change depending on the zone. So this is going to be the infirmary floor. Okay. So uh, I'm just making a version that has like blood stains on it. <laughs> Maybe we'll have that in there. Because there will be a lot of characters dying in this game. So <laughs> we might as well, I don't know if we'll keep that or not. M-rated uh, space base, who knows. My job here is a technical artist. So I do a lot of like the technical side because 
Bagel's not super technical, so I just I, I'm kind of handling integrating all of his characters and taking care of that stuff, um, and then just doing Kyle's like for the rest of the time. So on the art side, I think we'll be fine. I think um, we've got a good system, so we can have as many heads as we can draw in a day or a couple days. Um, the real the hard part is going to be getting all of the gameplay systems because right? uh, we have like a foundation for the AI and what they do, but um, as far as like doors and airlocks and ship docking and you know the, the editor interface working correctly and the tiles, a lot of that stuff is still sort of unknown and we're about halfway through. So yeah, I guess we'll see how it goes. But um, yeah, I think it'll come together. I think we've got good people on it who you know know what they're doing and everybody's like super excited about it. So I think it should be good good direction is generative in that it helps it helps people think of new ideas instead of just you know because there's another style of direction that's like I have this perfect thing in my head it's totally perfect and you just have to read my mind well enough that I will stop saying no and until then I'm going to say no not that not that not that not that um, and, and you know it's not like bad people it's not you know that's not like a bad person doing that it's just like you know it's, just, it's something you can fall into if you're just I don't know if you have a certain conception of what you know, a director type role is. Mm -hmm. um, whereas when you give people a direction that as soon as you tell it to them or as soon as you show them something, they get a whole bunch of ideas. That's really how you want to do it because then like all the creative people that you're working with are bringing their own stuff to it, you know, and they're not just fulfilling, uh, you know, I think even, even someone who's like an extremely strong authorial voice like Tim for all the like high level visionary vision type stuff, that he does. There's also a whole bunch of stuff that comes from the bottom up, mm -hmm. and you know, and he's and he, you know, seems to know enough to to like to, to roll with that. Mm -hmm. So we sort of had this big system, this construction system, which we hadn't implemented yet. It was sort of a meeting. And Dan called to say, "Hey, let's let's touch bases, make sure we're dividing this work up right." Because I had also written the game flow last night, mm -hmm. and I had sent that out this morning. So we've been talking about that, tutorializing a game or at least just making sure it's at all approachable, I should say, not even a full tutorial. It's a lot of work. So we've been thinking about that a lot, and I think when we went to, to work on the construction, we were like, okay, well, how can we make sure this is simple, we can actually get this work done? All right. Well, I could use your... I mean, yeah, we building your, robots. Building halfway robots. through, let's do so it. So the way we think about this is you're carrying an item, you see another item, you use this item with that item, and suddenly we have a partially constructed automaton. Is that There's right? a current plan. The other thing we could do is like you know, there could be an explicit button that puts you in, that like places something yeah. in the construction mode, and it doesn't require two pieces. So you can even just throw one piece into a construction matrix. You know, we could even have Drew do like a little grid effect or something that just like draws on the world. So it's like it's like you've locked it into space I on see. this thing. Once we switch to the single object system, so that means we got rid of inventory and all that sort of stuff. One of the things we were concerned about was like okay, only carrying one object could suck because then you can't. You know, you have to potentially cart more things around the road. Yeah. One of the things we thought might make that less annoying was that you could potentially start constructions and leave them and come back and add to them. So you could have like many things going in the world. If we want to put you in an explicit mode, we could. It just seemed like it'd be annoying to like and have all the pieces. I, I mean, I, I don't know if there's a huge advantage to allowing you to build the thing with one part. Like I think the the sort of Lego feeling of like okay I put two things together and then they like come alive is actually pretty cool. It feels like you need a torso and something else. Because I think picking up an arm and pointing it at a head feels weird. Also the torsos are really big in the world. Like you see them large, either holding one and looking for a small part or holding a small part and looking for the big part. Like that that. The only reason that that one might be more difficult is we have to worry about tutorializing at the start. Yeah. If it's just a button, when you grab your first object, you press the button, you go into grid, it all makes sense. But with this way, you have to grab that object and then find one that connects to it. Uh, probably more work, but have some hat elements that show you nearby other parts, maybe, that kind of just point out, hey, here's a, you're carrying a torso, here's some legs over here, or like, it's probably more work for the hat. Well, I think, Eventually, this is. I think these are all really easy solvable problems in a full game, and it's mainly just shortcuts that we're trying to take, where we don't either have to one add a ton of HUD work, because HUD work takes more time than you think, or two like tutorial stuff, which is all simple work, but it's so easy to break. I don't want to make it unintuitive per se, but you know, only, we can only do so much. So let's agree on how we initiate construction mode. What is required? If we want to do something as easy as putting a little message on the HUD, if you're carrying around a leg, 
saying like find a torso or if you're carrying around a torso like find another part like we could do something as easy as that for at least for the prototype that you're carrying around any other part beside a torso you do hint text to help find a torso you, what oh. if you can press a button to bring up the construction grid and the construction grid is in world space and there's only ever one so you press you press a button and a like a like a grid plane, like a transparent blue and white grid plane, like just goes meh, meh, and like shows up right here. Yeah. And then you can like walk over there and grab an arm, and when you bring it over, it's like, hey, arm slots. And so then you can just stick it on the grid. Oh, and yeah. then if you walked over there and you turned on the grid, all these things would just fall and the grid would appear over there. That's actually pretty sweet where it would be like, a, it would be 3D, right? It had to be 3D. It's almost like, it's almost like an action figure box, you know, like with the, um, with, just throw stuff on with the, the cell phone. Well, that's also sweet too, because if you walked up to it and you interacted with it, it would orient to you. So that's how you yeah. could orient the dudes. Mm -hmm. It just be for, like basically front facing on the axis. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds cool, but it's an <laughs> extra step. It might actually just be like <laughs> fucking annoying. <laughs> that you're like, that you're like, okay, let me make this. It's only thing. one grid active at a time. Like as you said, as soon as you create another grid, the other one just kind of falls apart. So then you couldn't have partially constructed automaton. Does there have to be a one true. grid? Why can't there be multiple grids you create in the world and we just like kill every, you know, if you create more than three or four or five, we just kill it, the previous one. You could also have them uh, go away if they have no parts in them for X number of seconds. Yeah, they get time out. That would be a way to do it too. The other thing we could do is that we could require you to have to start your construction with a torso. Yeah. yeah. So it's just, it's just a simple, easy to understand rule. A little inconvenient, but really easy to understand. It's so a power be, source, it's ultimately what you the, switch on. Actually, that's how you could bring the grid up, where you're carrying a torso, you hit a yeah, special and button, and place then the torso goes up button. and then the grid. <laughs> that seems solid. Because then they can each have their own uh, texture grid, grid thing, that's a good right, point. that shows all the slots on it. Right. I mean, that solves that problem. Oh, that's shit, that was some game development caught on camera right oh. there. Did you see that? <laughs> That went well. And <laughs> yeah, that was <laughs> good job. Good job. Uh, good pre-planning, everybody. Uh, really good work on the script. I like the part where you improvised about the grid. That was really good. And uh, yeah, so we're done now. Let's, let's go make a game. When we make any new design decisions or anything that the team that we are trying to type up those notes, send them out. So I did that, and then I just did a real quick. Um, I mean, it's a crappy mock-up, but it's enough, I think, to communicate the core idea. So that's good. I think basically, you know, it'll it'll allow the player sort of in their first spawn act is just kind of piece, we'll give them all the pieces they need. We'll have sort of an energy grid going, they'll kind of snap them together and create their little first entity and hopefully it says something awesome and does something slightly stupid that's funny and charming and then they'll be like, you know, maybe charming is the wrong word, but they're charming to me. So, uh, you're an alarmist, a turf garter, a chicken little, <laughs> an, an old, old white guy. guy. It's a cute kid's <laughs> office lawn. <laughs> that is the best. That's. That's not me. Why did he pick me for that? <laughs> so when you say watch. collision alert, you're like, hey, yeah. collision alert! Collision alert! Yeah, get out of here! You need a robotic... Drew had hard direction because his was a skittish cartographer, right? So he started figuring out, like, if he read it really fast... <laughs> Energy evasion epsilon! <laughs> Energy evasion epsilon! <laughs> but then he did it even faster. Avoidance initiated! Yeah, okay. Retreat mode That's deployed! Funny. But then when you, like, throw stuff on it... Avoidance initiated. Retreat mode deployed. That sounds really Blood good. Button escape pattern. Locating sound. Oh my Processing God, that's sound. So Identifying resonance. I think what it is is more about finding uh, the rhythm. And like, I mean, you can you can throw in characteristics if you want. I mean, it's all going to be kind of robotized, so it doesn't matter that much. I don't know if I can do an old guy voice. An old white guy. Doesn't have to be old guy. You're just irritated or something. Just I can be irritated. Yeah. Okay. I'll just. Yell some old man. I should have brought some water. You need to see? What the hell? I have to go get uh, something from my trailer? I, I wonder if like a garbage man is a good like oh, yeah. like a New York garbage man. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like that. You Just ready? The first few lines, I'll get your okay. level. Collision alert! Obstruction warning! Obstruction found. How's that? That's nice. I like the red fox feel. I'm I'm cranky. Right. I'm cranky, Camden! Good. I just smoked a fucking cigarette. <laughs> Eight in a row. You should make it sound more like a trach ring. That's really dark. Actually, yeah, there's, there's a couple Don't, of ways. Did you just film that? <laughs> Don't put that in there. All of, he's like rusting in the wrong parts. Yeah. You know. <laughs> okay. Okay, cool. You ready? Yep. Unit is tracking target. 
Violation procedures running. Target has exceeded tolerance. <laughs> like that's coming from Brooklyn. I don't know why. I don't know why he looks. Tolerance. Yeah. <laughs> tolerance. <laughs> Perimeter violation. Perimeter. Perimeter. <laughs> I think that's it. So, yep. Got a bunch All of right. NAs. Great. Alrighty. Good. You're the you're the bot from Jersey. Okay, sweet. I love what is it? You said beta. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Three, four, five, six. I can't believe Lee wrote that. It's so stupid. <laughs>